Awesome. All right, so we can start. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the Nerdy Chicano Show, and it's hosted by the Nerd Corps. And you've listened to us before on um, on Anchor, iTunes, Spotify, and we are coming to Twitch. And this is basically a show that I'm going to be doing by myself, or we could have guests. It depends um, if I can get Luis in here to be sitting with me and doing this. But we would need to upgrade our gear a little bit and get another mic. But um, yeah, this is going to be a different uh, something different. We're gonna I'm gonna be choosing these movies that I think don't have time to be um reviewed on the podcast and I want to review them on here or we can talk and we can talk about them and um, talk about their impact on 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 film in general um, I wanted to return to twitch for a long time because when I used to twi- when I used to stream back in my freshman year of college it was really really fun so um, if you guys w- would like uh, you guys could follow and just enjoy the stream guys Um this is gonna be awesome, and it's this this episode will be uploaded to YouTube on Monday when I go back to campus, so I can upload at their with their internet. But the way it's gonna work, it's that I will probably stream on Fridays, upload them on Mondays. But if I have time during the week, I could probably do um, stream on Tuesday, upload on on Wednesday. So um, just make sure you guys um, go and subscribe to our YouTube. It's down in the those links that are I have on the panels. But without further ado. We get to start the first episode of the Nerd Chicano Show, and we are going to be discussing 2017's Wonder Woman. Um, this one's a really, really good movie. One that I really wanted to start first with because I I love DC. DC's movies are really good, but this one was a really um a, a blockbuster hit in the box office when it came out, and it was really it was the amount of praise it was getting and um. Um, societal impact it had it was it was it was huge it was like unlike any other um um superhero movie that i had seen at the time and hold up i'm going to zoom in here to see what the chat is saying because i can't see anything oh it's fuzzy oh man um it's probably the uh it's probably the 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 mixer over here let me see Is it buzzing a little bit? Is it still buzzing? Maybe I could put this down a little bit. Let me see. So that would change up anything. But um, yeah, uh, Wonder Woman's a really good movie. It stars Gal Gadot um, playing Wonder Woman. We saw her in Batman vs. Superman. And a lot of people, what, came, uh, what surprised them from Batman vs. Superman was the portrayal of... Of Wonder Woman and I and everybody when coming up to that movie didn't think that Wonder Woman was I mean Gal Gadot was going to be as good as Wonder Woman as she was but um, if I remember correctly there's that scene when they're fighting Doomsday and she comes in and uh, I remember first seeing that that gave me chills I said oh that's that's our Wonder Woman that's she looks amazing and she she's she's going to become what Ryan Reynolds is when we think about Deadpool like Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool and in Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman, and this is the origin story of Wonder Woman. And you go and learn about how she was created by Zeus, and she lives in this island called Themyscira. Themyscira is run by the Amazons, and basically, it's an all-woman society. And the the it, this takes place during the fir- the First World War. Um, Steve Trevor, played by Chris Pine, Chris Pine, Chris Pine, Chris Pine, lands on. Um, on the mascara, um, but there is a different. Um, there is something going on in the war that he needs uh, sort of help. And after meeting Wonder Woman, he decides to. Wonder Woman just thinks that Ares is the one um, that's controlling all this idea of war and how it's a very it's a very um, um, religious thing to her. And you know it's it's it, th- this war is created by Ares because Ares makes humans bad basically, so she signs up to go in, go with Steve Trevor and try to stop this war, and we find these villains who well first of all the first two villains that we were introduced to we think they're the villains, but as we go into into um as we progress into the plot we think you know oh these. These are, this is Ares, like, this has to be Ares, like, Wonder Woman is tracking Ares down, and 
it's got to be Ludendorff. Um, but no, it ends up being this completely different guy, which a lot of people did see that as a problem with that third act is that, oh, well, the villain really didn't have this build up because, you know, we get to it. And it's this completely different person that we didn't know who it was. But, um, yeah, that's like the, that's pretty much the plot. And, you know, Wonder, the Wonder Woman is basically going and experiencing the world outside of Themyscira that she's never really been accustomed to. And it's a very, it's a very good movie. I, I will not, I will give that what it's granted. It's a very good movie. It's very beautiful. The colors pop a lot. Cinematography is beautiful. Those fight scenes in Themyscira with the German soldiers were beautiful. And that use of slow-mo, it's, it's, it's unlike anything I had seen in the DC movies yet. Um, Patty is, Patty Jenkins directs this and she was originally going to be the person who was going to direct, um, Thor, no, not Thor Ragnarok, um, Thor the Dark World, but she was, um, she was, uh, she, she was dropped out of it and ended up creating this movie. And a lot of people praised her for finally being able to direct this movie and create, well, a gem that came out last year. A lot of people really think that Wonder Woman was the best, best uh, superhero movie last year. Um, I kind of put it up there with Logan because, um, Logan was really, really good. But this one, it, it, it ties with Logan, basically, as being my favorite superhero movie of last year. Um, a lot of things Wonder Woman does correctly is basically fix the problems that, you know, movies like Suicide Squad and and um, Batman vs. Superman didn't have, um, didn't correct. And I, 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 um, I want to thank, um, you know, the writers for, for fixing that because... Um, Zack Snyder does write a little bit of it, and it seems that when Zack's not writing, fully writing the project, he can actually do some good. But um, Pat, I think the most grace should be given to to Patty because it's without Patty, this movie would wouldn't be as directed as it should be. Um, I I I do see the I do see the problem with the with the um with with the third act. I'm I'm not gonna lie guys. Like the those first two those first two acts are really, really good. There's they're so uh well paced and they bring the action and, and, and the emotion that's needed, but that third act does fall short. And I I think that's really what um I mean in general uh Oscar the the Academy doesn't like nominating superhero movies, but I think in general that, that really that third act was what cut it short for the Oscars. Um that the, the the final battle doesn't really I don't I don't see the problem with that actually everybody says that it's like this CGI fest and um, I I don't I don't see it at all I think the CGI looks fine compared to what it looked like in Justice League but even then after watching Spawn uh, pretty much all this bad CGI looks pretty damn good to me um, but I could see the problem with the villain that's that's definitely one that I wish they would have fixed and the the how the suit looks on on Ares it's 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 not the best but you know it's this is far from a perfect movie but it's 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 up there um it's definitely the best uh, best DC movie to me and we'll see what we get when um when we get Wonder Woman I mean Wonder Woman we when we get um Aquaman this uh, this December um I haven't checked the chat how many people are watching oh there's no people watching man Thanks. All right. Well, um, yeah, this movie's really, really good. Um, I like how the um, hold up. Let me check. Oh, I don't know. Andrew's not on yet anymore. But um, yeah, that's that's Wonder Woman for you guys. I really. It's not. I'm gonna. You know, first part will be the review, and then we're gonna go into some discussion after. But um, what? Oh. Um, just notifications. Um, yeah. Uh, if you guys do want to buy the Blu-ray, I bought this during um. Actually, yeah, I did buy this on on um, on Black Friday. I got it for a pretty good price, and it's. Comes with this one's a multi format that comes with the um with the digital and the DVD version. I, I still haven't picked up Justice League, but Wonder Woman was really good in that movie too. And I mean, I guess we can owe that to Gal because she, she, she's a very convincing Wonder Woman. And um, even though there's a lot of controversy of who she is as a person, it's um 
it's it's definitely something to keep an eye on. I um I think Wonder Woman two will definitely um, was um will live up to be something really good. <sighs> yeah. Um. Hold up. Brad is messaging, so I want to see what's up with that. But, um, Wonder Woman two is set to come out in November nineteenth already. And if you did not hear on the on the on the podcast, um, Kristen Wiig will be playing Cheetah as the villain role, and um, uh, Pedro Pascal. Uh, who was in Narcos season three, season two, and see, Narcos, uh, the Netflix show, and Game of Thrones season four? Um, hold on, let me tell you, Ch- Brad. Yeah, I, the first stream is going to be kind of awkward, and we'll get it going, um, but. Um, the, hopefully the next ones are a lot better, but, um, yeah, Wonder Woman 2, we, it looks like that's gonna be the whole, I mean, we don't know what Pedro Pascal is gonna be playing, but, you know, it, it, it looks like it's gonna be interesting. Oh, there's one person in here? Nice, um, uh, I think, um, I don't remember how much this made, but I know it was the highest grossing superhero film of last year, and... Um, it was, it, it deserves it rightfully so because, um, it had been a while since we've gotten, um, Wonder Woman in the media. Um, the last time was with Linda Carter, but, um, li- I mean, live, ac- uh, in live action terms. Um, but, um, I'm trying to collect my thoughts. It's not as easy as you do the podcast because like, I got to worry about the, the, f- the camera over here. I get nervous of being in front of cameras. I'm not an actor at all. Um, <laughs> I, I do, I direct, I don't, I don't star in movies. Um, what's it called? But, um, yeah, uh, Wonder Woman d- does these things correctly and basically all I said, and it's, 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 a, it's a really good movie. I recommend all y'all to watch it. Go buy it on Blu-ray or if you're like Brad, watch it on Cody, but, uh, find a way to watch this and, a lot of the, oh, now I remember. I the big reason why you know this movie was so big it was its representation for women, and finally we were gonna be able to see women kick ass on screen on screen, and you know that's really what what um what was the huge thing about this movie? You know, we had little girls dressing up as Wonder Woman and wanting to be Wonder Woman, be as strong as her, and that that's that's a very um. That's a very beautiful thing that could happen because you have this representation of women. It's, and you can see that now with Black Panther that just came out for the African American community. You know, it's it's that representation so that way people can feel ha- uh, feel good that there's you know superheroes that represent them. And um, you know that's really why it was this huge thing. And I remember the No Man's Land scene being being um this very uplifting and very um monumental thing that was making people scream in theaters and um i remember being next to luis and jonathan my friends at at the theater with the no man's land scene and we were just like our, our jaws were dropped man and it was it was just really it's it's re- something really um beautiful to watch on screen to see these women be represented and um i can't i can't wait for wonder woman 2 that's probably the next thing in the dc extended universe that i'm really excited to see you know uh, we talked about Shazam before on the podcast, and I say that I like um, you. You, it's fine. I I understand if, if Shazam is is something you're looking forward to, but I rather wait for a trailer. And Aquaman, it's I'm really looking forward to that. But what's coming next? It's I think we're in for some for a treat. So now I want to open the discussion into the DC DC DCEU in general, um, because Wonder Woman is was the biggest um, money maker for that for that for that franchise for that universe um so next we do have aquaman then we have shazam in april 2019 we have wonder woman in november 2019 and then um suicide squad 2 is one of the ones that is rumored to 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 go into production in later this later this year but um where what what else we have all these different projects that we said that were in development and um, I know that that Matt Reeves just said that pre-production is going really well for the Batman movie, but we also have that Nightwing movie that should that's already that's casting and 
you know, where does this all fit into the mix of the mess that is the DCEU right now? And no way am I going to compare it to Marvel because I don't want to do that because it's it's very it's DC is barely starting and it's getting its way around and you know it not everything is going to be easy at first like it wasn't easy for Marvel at first you had you had the Incredible Hulk um, not do not perform as well um, Iron Man two wasn't as, it wasn't received well by the, by the audience at all so you know barely starting you're going to run into those problems. Also, the first Thor wasn't received well by audiences as well. But um, I think uh, also a Flash, the Flash movie, which um, we're going to talk about this piece of news in the podcast, but apparently it's not going to be Flashpoint anymore. And where does how is that going to work? What's coming after, what's coming after Wonder Woman 2? Um, everybody's always talking about you know reboot the DCU, and I don't I don't think we should be rebooting the DCU. I think we should be greenlighting some of these um some of these projects that should already have been out, like um, Cyborg, Green Lantern Corps, um, Flash, uh, Bat and the Batman. Those are four movies that we should be watching. We should have a date already for, and we should be able to. We should be looking forward to seeing those movies, but. Um, I know that Green Lantern Corps doesn't even have a uh, director yet. Um, uh, Cyborg doesn't have a director yet either, um, or a writer. All we know is that that Ray Fisher is going to be playing um, Cyborg. I, those are four movies that we should have a date for. I I don't I don't think it's important for us to get a Suicide Squad two already. Like we just got that in 2016. We don't need to get it in 2019. Hold up, hold up a little bit more. And we'll get to we'll watch another we'll watch another Suicide Squad, but I think what we need to do is stop. I think what they need to do is just stop um, saying like, "Oh, these movies are gonna happen." Like, "Oh, uh, Justice League Dark's gonna happen, Nightwing's gonna happen, Deathstroke's gonna happen." Instead of doing that, just get some directors and let them make their movies and green light these movies because it's 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 gonna happen that that um. That people are gonna get, people are gonna, people are already getting impatient. But fans are gonna be getting more impatient, knowing that something like the Batman still doesn't have a date attached to it. We were supposed to be getting in 2019, but if it's barely in pre-production and doesn't go into production until 2019, that's not gonna happen. It's gonna come out probably 2020 or 2021. Um, we still, we um, we still don't know when Nightwing is gonna start production because Chris McKay still has not cast a uh, uh, Dick Grayson. Or how any of that is gonna work? Um, Batgirl lost uh, Joss Whedon, and, and he's not directing or writing it anymore. So, how is all this gonna work, and how is it gonna affect the way the the DCU is working right now? I know that the we got Walter Armada to be the president of DC Films, and a lot of good things have been have been going on because of him, and we're getting all these changes and directors for Flash, but um, it leaves a lot of speculation to see what's gonna happen. And then the whole stupid rumor that, you know, that Ben Affleck's not going to play Batman anymore. And apparently Jake Gyllenhaal is going to be Batman in the Batman. Um, those, that I really don't care about. I, I Like I'd say in the podcast, just, I'm going to wait until Matt Reeves confirms that, who's going to be Batman. And until then, I'll, I'll save my judgment for that. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, I'm not here to propose of fixes to the DCU, nor um, bring, I just want to bring my insight to it. And... I feel as fans are well they don't they're not entitled to to an explanation but at least uh give us a, a new slate of movies at um San Diego Comic Con and say okay like these are the movies we're going to release and the we're we're aiming for these at least a, a year like I'm we're aiming for um Green Lantern Court to come out in 2020 or we're aiming for Nightwing to come out in 2021 um at least for for um for San Diego Comic Con to do that, but um, that was oh man I I, just, I don't even know how long this is gonna be but this is gonna um I know that once we can get more guests in here it's gonna be more fun and more um less lonely um I want to get Luis in here like I said and I'll probably try to go find that uh, microphone in my storage room but um yeah that was the first episode and. Um, you guys could watch, you're going to be able to watch this on YouTube on Monday, but, um, if, if, who is, who's on, actually, oh, no one's on here, actually, all right, well, 
next time uh, when we do a stream i'll see if we can get some um discussion questions in the in the chat but um that was it for you guys um i'm sorry that it's uh not as fascinating as you thought or but it's the first stream it's going to be awkward and i have to get used to being in front of a camera again because um, i haven't done i haven't done vlogs or stuff like that in a long time but um um we'll see we'll, 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 we're gonna get we're gonna get better as we go on and this is gonna be um this is gonna get better as we as we do more and hopefully we we don't sound uh, as awkward as we do and we don't have the microphone buzzing which um, Andrew didn't tell me if it was keep on if it kept on buzzing but um thank you for listening um thank you for watching guys um sorry it was a, such a short stream but um, next, uh, I'm going to have to start making a structure for these streams as well. Um, but I'm glad, I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you for sticking around. Um, uh, we will, we, you'll be able to watch this on YouTube and this will not be uploaded to Anchor or any of the podcast services. This is strictly a different show to have on Twitch and to have on YouTube. So... Uh, stay tuned with us and go ahead and listen to the to the, to the latest episode of the Nerd Corps podcast. And we're going to be um, recording on Sunday the On the Waterfront episode for our second classic film month review. So um, stay safe, guys. And this is your Nerdy Chicano signing out.